So this video is to demonstrate the exam of the abdomen. So positioning of the patient is actually quite important for the abdominal exam. You want to make sure that the patient's laying as flat as they can possibly tolerate. Completely flat is the optimal position. Also, you want to make sure that their legs are also extended and resting on a surface. So I'm going to ask you to lay back for me. And I'm going to bring out the footrest if the exam table has one. If I leave the patient's legs dangling, this is number one, uncomfortable for the patient. But number two, it actually tenses the muscles in the abdomen and makes the exam more difficult. So just like any other exam that we do, we want to make sure that we do a full inspection of the abdomen as a first part of the exam. So we also need to make sure that we have appropriate exposure of the abdomen. So what I'm going to ask you to do is if you could raise your gown up for me. You want to make sure that the gown is raised at least to the base of the rib cage, so that I can see the entire bottom of the rib cage. As far as lowering the um, patient's shorts or pants or whatever it is they happen to be wearing, you want to make sure that it is lowered down almost to the level of the pubic symphysis so that I have view of the entire abdomen. The biggest mistake that we see students do is not lowering um, the patient's uh, shorts or waistband low enough, and what they're looking at is really just the upper quadrants of the abdomen and not the whole thing. So for inspection, you want to make sure, again, what's the shape of the abdomen? Is it scaphoid? Is it protuberant? Is it flat? Um, are there any scars from previous surgeries or accidents before? Is there any asymmetries, um, lesions on the skin? So this is what we're looking for in full inspection of the abdomen. If you find any marks or lesions, you can question the patient about those. In most other exams, the order of inspection, excuse me, the order of examination is inspection, percussion, palpation, and finally ending with auscultation. And that's true for examination of just about everywhere on the body, except for the abdomen. For the abdominal exam, we need to do our auscultation first before we do any of our percussion or palpation. The reason for this is that actually doing the process of the palpation can actually alter the bowel sounds. So you want to make sure that you do this examination first. So for examination of bowel sounds, again, what I'm, the abdominal cavity is one big open cavity. So I only need to really listen in one location to hear the bowel sounds. If I hear them, I'm done, and I don't need to listen in other locations. You need to listen for a minimum of five seconds before you make any determination that you're not going to hear anything. And then you can consider moving it to a new location and listen for at least another 15, 30 seconds more for you state that the patient is not having any bowel sounds. So again, you just want the patient relaxed and quiet and listen for the bowel sounds. Bowel sounds are intermittent, uh, so you may have to listen for a little while. Uh, his bowel sounds are normal and active, and I was able to hear several um, gurgling uh, sounds as I went through there in that time frame. Next, when we have the patient here, we listen for abdominal bruise. So again, the normal finding for abdominal bruise is to hear nothing. So again, you want to make sure you're listening in the correct location so that you know you're hearing the correct nothing. So knowing the location of where to listen for these bruise is really very important. So there are five main arteries that we're going to listen to. So there's the abdominal aorta, which is in the midline of the abdomen. Um, and typically we're going to be listening for that brewery up near um, the top part of that aorta, so in the epigastric area near the xiphoid process. Next, we want to listen for renal breweries. The renal arteries are just on either side of that, but again, superior in the abdomen. So just on either side of the midline in the epigastric area. Finally, the iliac arteries, which are on either side of the umbilicus, at the umbilicus or just below it, which is the area of the aortic bifurcation. So you want to listen in each one of those locations for several heartbeats to see if you hear a brewery.